Hey everyone, John Carey again here giving you some more information on Git's patch mode. So if you watched my previous video, you already know that patch mode is a way to stage individual pieces of a single file rather than the entire file itself. And that allows us to keep a cleaner Git history by keeping all the functionality relative to one single commit, uh, I guess, all the functionality relative to each other in one single commit instead of branched across several different so in this case, we'll pick up where we left off from the last video, and that was talking about this long change here, which Git thinks is relative to each other. So we can, we're can we in patch mode, so we can use S to split this patch into a uh, two hunks. And we have this section up here, which is removing some aliases and a, a few comments here, and it's butted right up against this change to our path and adding an additional node path here. We don't want these two changes in the same commit, and Git can't split it down anymore for us, so we need to edit this hunk ourselves. So we'll use E and hit Enter. We'll come back to this line here at the top, but the uh, minus stuff here is showing that those changes were removed, and of course the pluses here were that uh, those lines were added. So Git tries to give us some instructions down here at the bottom showing us how to remove minus lines and how to remove plus lines. So if we have a line that has been removed, we can take the minus character and change it to a space character. And that just changes the text to be contextual, meaning Git will just pretty much ignore that we ever changed it and keep it, uh, yeah, basically keep it so that we never changed it. But if we wanted to remove a plus line from the uh, from our hunk here, we would just remove it. So if you're like me and you're like, oh, I'm just going to follow the directions literally, right? So let's say we don't need, we don't want these four lines here to be in our commit. So we'll just remove them and try and save it. And look what happened. Yep. Patch does not apply. So if you've tried to edit a hunk before, I'm going to bet you saw this and that's why you're here. So let's learn how to do this properly. So let's say, no, no, let's get back to where we were before. No changes staged. All right, let's jump in. Git add patch mode, we'll split it and we'll edit it. So we're right back to where we were. Follow our instructions again, yeah, in a second. So at the top of our file here is the real secret for the black magic that's involved with editing a hunk. So first, some explanation. The first set of numbers is the state of our file before we made changes to it. And the second set of numbers is the state of our file after we've made changes to it. So we think about our file in the way that it used to be. We know that this change, this change set starting right here at line three, originally started on line 47 in our original file. So I have that file open here in another pane. And we'll see this closing brace matches up with this closing brace over here, line 47. Line 47 starts here. So the second number is how many lines our original file had in it, given this context that it's showing us. So that includes all of this context stuff here and all of these stuff that we are removing. So we're on line three. Let's count up these lines here. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. But then we've got some added lines, which were not in our original file. So 29, and then there's a blank line down here for 30 before we get into comments. So we have 30 lines of context for our original patch, or at least our original code, and it started at line. 47. So now let's talk about the second numbers. So if we were to apply this current patch, we would have line 47 started here, and we would have one, two, three, and then we would remove a whole bunch of code. Resume down here with our additions, four, five, six, seven. Make a little bit more sense now? Hopefully, because that's the key to it, is we're going to have to change these numbers after we make our own individual changes to this patch. So let's say that we only want to stage these removal changes up here. So 
So all the minus changes are going to stay. And if we revisit our instructions, it says to remove plus lines, just delete them. So we're like, okay, so we have four lines here that we want to delete. So we're going to say 4DD in Vim to remove those four lines. And if we jump back up to here, here's where we have to edit uh, our file. So because we removed those four lines in our resulting file, we need to change this 7 to a 3. 7 minus 4 equals 3. Because now, after these uh, removal lines are changed, and after that patch is applied, there are only going to be three lines in our resulting patch. So we need to change this guy to three. So, so you'll see now we have started on line 47, and there are only three uh, lines of context that will be in that file. And then we can quit out of our editor, and it says it didn't apply. So let's jump back in. All right, what did we screw up? We have one, two, three. Oh, it's because we, we removed this last, we had a line down here that just had that, and that really actually messed with our original patch. So actually, if we wanted to delete that, we would need to change our original here. That said uh, 29, because then we would have only had 29 lines of context. So let's actually just undo everything we just did. Let's pretend that I never made that change. I'm sure this is really confusing now, but uh, hopefully you understand. So we've got 29. Yeah, we'll just roll with it, right? So let's apply our change. And hey, look at that. It actually applied. Uh, we're going to do that one more time here in a minute. And hopefully that's a little more clear. So we see that Git didn't balk at our change, and it just accepted our change. So now we'll quit out of patch mode and look at status. We'll see that we have some files or uh, some changes in our staging area and some yet to be staged. If we look at git diff, cached, we can see the uh, changes that are staged right now. We'll see only our removal lines are staged, and that's what we want. So let's commit those changes. So now we have one, or we have the addition lines up here. So now we can just say s to split, and we can stage those, and we can commit them right away. And now we're back again to a hunk that we need to edit manually. So let's jump into edit. Again, we talked about our original file and our new file. So our, our original file started on line 51, which will be this export statement right here. And sure enough, line 51 matches up with what we've got in our other pane. So we would have 51 with six lines of context before we added the addition. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six was our original file. And then our resulting file, again, starts on line 51, but only has five lines. So we have one, two, three, skip those lines that are deleted, four, five. So in this case, we are going to, we could just change these to context. As in, we want to keep those. We, we don't want to delete them from the patch. And then we'll have these additions that will end up being staged. So now what do we need to do? We need to change our resulting file, this number here, this five, to say, okay, how many lines are going to be present in this hunk after we change it? So we're actually going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's change our five up here to an eight. Eight, cool, see, let's see if it applies. Sweet, Git didn't balk at all. And that's because we changed the file, or we changed the size and told it how many files, how many lines were in that uh, were in that hunk. Yeah, cool. Part of me is like, oh, I can't believe it worked on the first try. So, get status. We'll see that we have some changes that we added, which are just those additions. And if we look at diff for that, we'll see that those changes haven't been staged yet. So we'll do get commit. I don't even remember what we added. So we'll just do git commit dash b so that we can see our changes in there. And we'll see that we added an alias for highlighting keynote. And that's just an, a cool alias that I found that allows me to uh, take a PHP file or any file and dump it to a highlighted rich text file, which I can copy and paste into my keynote when I'm doing presentations, right? So pretty cool. And then we'll do stage our 
removal of some of our exports. We'll commit again. Yeah, good enough, right? So now our file has been fully committed. If we look at our log, we'll see that we have all those changes, or if we have a prettier log file. Uh, we can see those, like if you were looking at gitx, this is just a one line, um, shows the files that we had, and then we can do git log p for patch mode, and we can look back individually and see all of the changes that were made relative to each log file. So now you'll see that each of these commits is split up into their own thing. So let's say that I accidentally um, screwed something up with this most recent commit, like like I actually needed this stuff. So then I could do git revert, give it the SHA, or at least a shortcut of the SHA, and it will say, okay, we're, we are removing it. It gives me the ability to edit that commit message, and I don't really care to edit it. I just want to edit it. So then we look at git log again, and we see that it reverted our old uh, commit. This commit is still there, but then this next one is that we reverted it. So, so yeah, that's editing patch mode. The secret, again, is going back to those lines at the top and switching them, doing some math, and making sure that they tally up correctly. So hopefully that's useful. And if you find any better ways of doing it, like if I'm a complete idiot and I did something wrong, then please tell me why so I can get better too. Hope you enjoyed, and good luck editing your hunks.